Diabetes is a life-altering disease that can have devastating effects if not properly treated. Formerly called juvenile diabetes and insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus type 1 diabetes is a disease in which the pancreas makes very little or no insulin. It is an autoimmune disease that is a reaction of the body's defense system against one or more of its own tissues or organs because it perceives them to be foreign substances. In this case, this type of process attacks and destroys the beta cells of the pancreas, the cells that normally produce insulin. People with type 1 diabetes must inject themselves daily with insulin for the rest of their lives. Type 1 diabetes first appears most often in children and young adults before the age of 20. The symptoms usually come on quickly and are fairly severe. Let us review some common symptoms of type 1 diabetes that can go unnoticed. Excessive urination and bedwetting can be embarrassing for a child and frustrating for parents, but they can also be signs of type 1 diabetes. Excessive urination, or polyuria, is the body's way of purging the extra sugars in the bloodstream through the urine. Much water also is lost through this process and can lead to dehydration. At other times, the body will try to counteract hyperglycemia by sending a thirsty signal to the brain. This causes excessive thirst or polydipsia in an attempt by the body to dilute the blood and bring the high blood sugar back to normal levels. Another excess signal of type 1 diabetes is polyphagia, or excessive eating. In some instances, the pancreas will actually secrete more insulin to respond to the skyrocketing levels of blood sugar. Insulin, among other functions, acts to stimulate hunger and leads to increased hunger and eating. Although children who have type 1 diabetes might be eating more, they could be losing weight. Diabetes causes an inability to process many of the calories in foods ingested, so while they could be consuming more, they could be processing less, marking unexplained weight loss as another sign to be aware of. Another symptom of type 1 diabetes is fatigue. As a result of this disease, the body cannot move glucose into the cells to use as a fuel source. The body then switches over to metabolizing fat, partially or completely, as a fuel source. This process can drain a lot of energy. The end result of the body's search for adequate fuel can be fatigue or feeling constantly tired. Poor wound healing is another sign. Hyperglycemia interferes with the normal function of white blood cells, which are important in defending the body against bacteria and in cleaning up dead tissues and cells. As a result, wounds take much longer to heal and can become infected more easily. Other symptoms that may indicate type 1 diabetes include frequent urinary tract infections, altered mental status, blurry vision, nausea, weakness, lethargy, anorexia, dehydration, and dry skin. The most important message to convey here in this discussion of the symptoms of type 1 diabetes is that these symptoms are to be taken very seriously. For example, it is easy to dismiss excessive urination as a childhood stage of bedwetting that the child will grow out of. However, it could be cluing you into a situation much more severe and life-altering. Pay attention, be aware of the signs, and take the proper steps if symptoms persist. Children who have diabetes typically have a history of polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, and a glucose level above 200 mg per deciliter. Weight loss and fatigue are also common. To determine the child's blood glucose level, usually a finger stick blood glucose is done. This is a rapid screening test that yields an immediate result, although it is not as accurate as serum glucose. The provider may follow up with a fasting plasma glucose test. A fasting blood glucose level greater than or equal to 126 mg per deciliter indicates diabetes. Oral glucose tolerance testing is usually not necessary for children. Finally, we have the glycosylated hemoglobin, or hemoglobin A1c, and it is the best measurement of blood sugar control in people already known to have diabetes. It is a measure of blood sugar levels over a period of time, about the last 120 days, which is the lifespan of a red blood cell. Excessive glucose attaches to the hemoglobin in red blood cells and remains for the life of the cell. The percentage of hemoglobin that has had excessive blood sugar attached to it can be measured. A hemoglobin A1c results of 8 to 8.5 percent is acceptable for children younger than 7 years and below 8 percent for children 7 and older. Next, let's look at treatment. It involves a daily injection of insulin. This is usually a combination of two types of insulin, 
a short-acting insulin, such as regular insulin, and a longer-acting insulin, such as NPH, Lente, or Ultralente insulin. Insulin must be given as a subcutaneous injection, usually two or three injections per day around mealtimes. Dosage is individual and titrated by the health provider. The nutritional needs of children with diabetes are essentially the same as for unaffected children. They require enough calorie intake to balance their daily energy expenditures and support growth and development. It is important to provide a balanced diet, including the basic food groups. Eating meals at consistent times of the day is also quite important for children who have diabetes. Exercise is encouraged as it aids the body in the use of foods and often decreases insulin requirements. It should be included as a part of the management and regime and based on the child's interests and abilities. Unplanned activities may cause hypoglycemia, which can be compensated for by providing an extra snack before the activity. So, how can you be effective in reducing the potential risks for diabetes? Remember the nursing care concerns involved with this disease, monitoring levels of blood glucose and ketones, giving insulin as needed, based on glucose levels, maintaining correct fluid and electrolyte balance, and providing child and family education about continued management of type 1 diabetes. This teaching plan will help you educate your clients and your clients' families. Remember, the most powerful weapon against type 1 diabetes is education. If you are aware of what to look for, you can be better equipped to spot signs of disease and treat it. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise and is increasing among overweight children, which underscores the importance of appropriate nutrition for all children. Your knowledge and expertise can help children with diabetes enjoy a healthy and active lifestyle.